Feeling he has a pretty insane roster to go with it. And here it is, Vaughn Miller. Oh my god. Oh, he's got double-edged stats. This is what I was afraid of. Yo, what is going on, boys? Let's go ahead and dive right into the abilities for this Super Bowl. Jalen Carter is a rookie defensive end. It has double or nothing and inside stuff. That's his best defensive lineman player by far. He also has Jamison Williams, who has short and elite route apprentice at receiver. Amon Ross St. Brown, slot apprentice and slot of Matic. Penny Sewell has Secure Protector and Post Up. Now, that Secure Protector will negate one of my defensive ends that have double or nothing and edge threat, but we do have a counter to that, which is to pass commit. That'll actually trigger the edge threat ability a lot more frequently, so we should be able to counter that. Jared Goff is essentially useless with Quick Draw, High Point, Dead Eye. Um, kicker, Zen Kicker, doesn't matter. Evan Ingram is Tight End Apprentice, Short in Elite, so man coverage pretty much off the table, and then defensively in the back end, he has Deshaun Elliott and Jesse Bates that have deep out zone KO and pick artist. Both of those players really do a good job in maximizing his defensive uh, coverage show he likes to run, which is the Mabel coverage, 30-yard flats, or 25-5, and 30-5, and five, somewhere around there he'll mix and match, but the, the two safeties makes it difficult for me to throw the ball down the sidelines or really up the inside seam because of the knockout ability, right? I don't have any receivers that... We'll hold on to the, the ball. There's not really a good counter for these knockouts, and the deep ones, specifically the zone ones, are hard to really ag and kind of maneuver your receivers away from. So with that being said, those are his abilities. I do have some abilities of my own. Mostly I've got Hot Route Master at quarterback, and then my defensive abilities are Edge Threat Elite, Double or Nothing on both those players, uh, on Nick Bosa, Von Miller, and then on offense, I have Michael Thomas with short in, short out, and then I've got... Uh, Josh Allen with Hot Route Master. So with that being said, guys, let's dive right into the gameplay. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. All right, so we are on defense first. We are going to be running a match style of defense. This is going to be nickel over or nickel normal, depending on which year you're used to playing, right? This is nickel over. Um, we're running cover four quarters. Now, I knew right off the bat that I was going to be pass committing pretty much every single play. A, I need to to make my defenders react a little bit quicker. Um, and it's going to really help my pass rush when it comes to getting the edge threat to really, you know, do its craziness, right? So you see that we can mix in the blitz, which depending on if I want to be on the right outside linebacker um, or if I want to be on the left guy. Now, the difference there is if I want the blitz to really come in, I need to be on Turner, as you see right on there. Um, but if I want to be on the left guy, that's going to do a better job at stopping the run for me. Um, here, first drive of the game, this is what, the second, maybe third play of the game, and we catch a huge break. Uh, we get a fumble. Don't think there was anything that he did differently besides maybe not being on conservative, right? So, um, completely lucky. There's no, nothing more to say about that. Got really lucky with that fumble. Almost all fumbles are lucky. In Madden, in my opinion, um, but I will say if, if you're not rocking conservative for a thousand bucks, you kind of might deserve it. I don't know, right? I mean, it's you can take that for what it's worth. Um, I think you should always be on conservative, uh, just because I think fumbling is the flukiest of all things. Um, I did get the strip animation uh, from behind, so I don't necessarily know if that had anything to do with it. I don't honestly know if it even if it was my guy that got the strip. But um, as you can see here, I am getting dotted up, up and down the field, really. And the the way he's playing offense, he's doing a good job of kind of mixing it up. And you'll see I'm sending my four defensive linemen. I'm playing on the left of screen guy, so I'm not really trying to get the blitz in very consistently. Um, and he's doing a good job of, you know, moving up and down the field at the moment. But it's predominantly with him being out of bunch tight end. I labbed how to really defend bunch tight end really well. Um, and knowing he was going to be in bunch tight end, uh, I wanted him to have to hit me with something different. I wanted him to be in tight or to be in something that he may not be as comfortable in. And I think throughout the course of this game, I did a pretty good job at, of that. Um, I also consistently played shallow with either hard flats or uh, five yard clouds. Um, so you can see, like I'm mixing, I'm mixing them up depending on what I'm doing here. But I'm doing a great job of you know sneaking the blitz in, as you saw right there, or playing with 
the match coverage to where I'm not going to get bombed and I'm taking away different elements, right? So I kind of talked about this in the intro a little bit. I have the ability with this scheme defensively to take away the crosser, the um, deep post, which is a match bomb, um, really an everything bomb, and then the corner routes. So like I knew that and I knew that he would run a lot of the underneath, you know, drag, slant, post combos that you can see out of it, um, out of bunch of tight end that's really good. Now, uh, defensively, I feel really good. I held him to three. I got a fluke fumble. Um, and at really at this point in the game, I'm feeling great. Like this is my first offensive drive. I knew what he was going to be running. Um, I, I pretty much knew that he would be in this or dollar. Um, I do feel much better against dollar than I do against this three, three cub. So as I mentioned in the abilities, uh, when I was talking about the abilities, he does a really good job of taking away some of the stuff, but you'll see like that throw a, that could have been a pick six. It could have been a pick. But I have no idea how that was under pressure. I have Fearless on Josh Allen. I didn't drop back too far, and he just chucked it. Um, so you'll see the, the theme of this game completely on both sides of it, his side and my side, is we just we just got screamed at. Um, now, I have the abilities. Mine was a lot more consistent, I would say. But he's sending a three-man rush. I'm assuming he's pass committing um, just because of that fact. So, like, I mean, a three-man rush, he's got... Aiden Hutchinson, I don't know who his defensive tackle is, and then he's got Jalen Carter. Um, Jalen Carter has inside stuff, so it's kind of hard to run to the right. So you see, like, right there, I tried to flip my run and run to the, uh, or excuse me, run to the left. I tried to run uh, to the right, and you see we only pick up a couple yards. And then he's crashing his defensive line out, which is oftentimes getting the one-on-one, -on -one, and it's triggering the double or nothing. Once again, my offensive line's really bad, his offensive line's really bad. And um, we just got, yeah, we got screamed at. So you see throughout the course of this game so far, I'm trying to, to mix up what I'm doing offensively with attacking over the middle. I'm running a lot of this quarterback draw. Like I'm trying to run a lot of the quarterback draw because I, I really want to punish him for sending only three people. He's sending these outside linebackers into flats more times than not. So with it just being a three-man rush, I think, as I almost threw another pick right there, I think I should be able to run the quarterback draw. Now, um, you, you'll see throughout the course of this game that he doesn't really give me the draw. The draw is not really an option, but I do have to keep him honest. Here you see that we do have post wheel. Post wheel is my favorite play in the formation, um, but I know I can't abuse it because I know he'll, just, he'll adjust to it. He's a good player. Um, so you see I'm trying to attack over the middle. I've got the two drags. I've got the post. Um, there, double or nothing triggered. My left tackle ended up on the ground. I had to throw something, end up throwing right at it. So my first drive, offensively, get absolutely boxed. Um, so going into this, I felt good, right? I really felt good in terms of I got the fluke fumble, I held him to three, and then I had the ball back. Like I feel like I could have put the game completely out of reach early, and I didn't. Um, and I'm not used to struggling on offense, especially in this league where the offense is really good, or excuse me, the defense is really good. But people that I've been facing have really no clue how to uh, make adjustments, and especially stuff they haven't seen, right? So a lot of these guys in this league, they've never seen empty tray stack. Um, so a lot of them, um, you know, I was, I think I threw 13 of 15 in the AFC Championship game or something like that. Um, so like I was able to play really good offense throughout the entire playoffs, throughout the season, really. Here, I'm dropping players back. I'm doing all I can to take away some of these crossing routes, and you can see he's still able to hit them. That was fourth and six. I feel like I could have gotten off the field right there um, if my safety would have animated. I thought he was in the perfect position for a hook zone. Um, and you'll see we're kind of going to be in this little chess match because he starts motioning people out. That running back, I kind of expected, might be able to beat me over the top. My secondary is not the fastest, and I am leaving that guy in match coverage. Um, but... You can see, like, he's doing setups that you can tell he's not very comfortable with. Um, or if he is, I didn't get the vibe. Um, there he tries to actually cut block my defensive end, it looked like. I don't know why he would try to cut block that way. I guess maybe his right tackle was, or his superstar was on the, the right, I guess. I don't know. Um, but Von Miller just hurdled DeAndre Swift because, you know, Madden's programmed well. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you can see he's getting absolutely hummed at. And... If I'm on the left guy, I'm not doing anything. You see, like, I'm on Warrior here. I'm not sending a blitz. 
Now, we don't have identifier, so in a way I'm kind of creeping, which is kind of kind of frowned upon. Um, but here, like, I manned people up. I didn't get the running back manned up like I thought I did, so I went to lurk the tight end. Running back wide open on the wheel route, so another fourth downs converted on his end. Um, but I'm making him work, right? And that was kind of the theme. I, I knew going into this game, I didn't want to let him run the ball. So nickel over by default does a good job of that. I have the ability to shoot the run by crashing the D-line up and shooting through the A-gap. Um, but like, he's audible around quite a bit, and I know he's he's willing to dink and dunk, which is, is fine, um, because as long as I get him into the third and mediums, fourth and mediums, I know I'm going to be able to play really good uh, defense because I can get crazy with my adjustments because I know he's not going to have much time to, to get the ball off. Plus... You'll see if I'm trying to get the pressure in, you see how, how I'm on Turner. I can be on Turner right here and get the blitz in. Now, obviously, he motions the guy out, makes me have to adjust again. So, like, I can't really blitz him if he does that. Here, he might have had a touchdown, should have had a touchdown. I don't really know. Um, he did throw a high ball to a running back. So, uh, in Mutt, that's for sure a touchdown. But at the same time, I, I just got beat. A 95-speed player got beat by a 92-speed running back. So, like, I don't really know. Here, makes a great play call on his part. Motions over, tries to hit the corner route. And I don't know if I don't know if he racked that or what the case may have been, but uh, that was very unlucky on his part. Kind of a theme to this first half, uh, if I'm being honest. Like, he did, he got really cheated on the fumble. Um, and then after that, like, you can see he's, he's overthinking, I think, with the edge threat. Um, because he's doing a decent job of picking them up, um, or at least getting the pass off, I should say. He's not able to pick it up, and he's not able to attack me deep, and I think that kind of played into his into his head a little bit. Um, he's a really good passer by by nature. Like he's really good. So like I knew going into into the game, I'm not going to be able to sit here and and give him all day. That's part of the reason why I made the trades for Nick Bosa. Um, I want I wanted to force him into the whole uh, idea of having to get the ball out quick. And if I can do it sending three people, then more power to me because I can adjust better out of it, right? So we're back on offense. I feel like I've, I've only had the ball, what, once on offense? I mean, technically, I think I had it with 19 seconds left after his field goal. Um, so we get the ball back. The first half, I don't even feel like I played offense. So I'm definitely not in a rhythm. Um, I got stopped on my only offensive position, possession. So like you can see, like I'm trying to do things uh, offensively that I feel like I could do. And like right there, the double or nothing activated and my left tackle ended up on the ground again. Um, yeah, I mean, simple three-man rush on his part. It's It really, in this league, made it almost pointless to, to uh, sit back and blitz. Like you see, like, He's sending three people, and I'm getting screamed at before I can hit a post over the middle of the field. Um, but hopefully you can look and see by my route combo is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get multiple reads going over the middle of the field. Now, that right there may have looked a bit sketchy, um, but I, I, I saw his user bite down to the middle of the field, and that S post is going to get inside of any flat. So luckily he went to dollar there. And you'll see, like, he actually calls a timeout because I know huddled. And I wanted him in Dollar. The 3-3 Cub was giving me a lot of problems. Um, and Dollar, I feel so confident and so easy beating Dollar that um, you can tell, like, I, I wanted him in there, right? Now here, I hit him with this trail route combo that lights broke down um, on the website. And um, I went right back to it. This was kind of dumb on my part. I thought I would be able to get the corner out. And I'm looking at Dawson Knox to the left, and he just doesn't get open. So I tried to throw the trail route late back to the right. He just, I don't know, I guess he stopped running. Um, not that it was open anyway. That was a miserable read. But um, it gets picked. He tries to jurtle, I think, um, ends up jumping up and down for for some reason. And, um, yeah, could have been a fumble right there. It actually wasn't. So 7-6, um, like like I said earlier, like I, I feel really good defensively. Like he's moving the ball, but I, I'm not giving him hardly anything once he gets inside, you know, that 20, 30 yard line. And it's really difficult to um, pick up this, this heat. I mean, you can see he's doing everything he can here. He makes a boneheaded decision. Like I know that in Mutt that's open, like, but a, he's got Jared Goff. 
He's got no abilities that's going to allow him to throw on the run. And, yeah, I don't know. Like, that was one of those things. Maybe he's playing too much mutt right there. Um, maybe he's hit it in this CFM, I guess. But I sure as hell have tried to, to hit throws like that in this CFM. And every single time it's underthrown. So, here we go. And back to the run. 7-6 um, ball game. You know, we're in the third quarter. You see, I've got 84 yards of offense. I, I don't feel like I've even been on offense, honestly. And when I have been on offense, I haven't done anything. So uh, here, I'm finally going to get it going. Um, you see, we're already across the 50, um, partially due to the pick, mostly due to the pick. But um, you see, I'm starting, to, I'm starting to get into more of a groove. Um, and I feel like that's something that I needed to do in this game. Um, I, I just really struggled to get going offensively. And with with his user being in the middle of the field, like you can see, like I'm trying to throw over the flats and you see how long the ball takes to get there. Like it's just such a risky thing to try to throw over those 25, 30 yard flats, especially if I'm getting pressure. So, um, we're on the one yard line here. I expected him to be in coverage, um, which I think he actually was, but, uh, normally I can run that QB draw in even against the nickel overlook. Couldn't get it in right there. So, I go back to Jumbo. This is halfback smash. I can tell with his user in that A-gap that if I ID uh, his right of screen defensive tackle, I should be able to walk in right here. And uh, as you can see, that's pretty much exactly what happens. So we go up 14-6. to six. I barely have more passing yards than him. It's 122 to 120. Um, and you can see, like, like I mentioned here, he's in spread at, the, at this exact moment. Like I don't think he actually calls this play, but you can see like he goes to spread and what I'm doing is exactly what I wanted to because I knew, like, he doesn't want to be in spread. Um, here he goes back to bunch uh, strong. I make the adjustments here. Now my user is really sloppy on this drive. And you see, like, that was my only person I had to guard. And the fact that I'm using a guy that's 90 speed, maybe that's what it was. The fact that I'm blitzing my user, that way I can zone out my def defensive tackles, you know, wasn't able to really you know, get to where I needed to here. Like I mentioned, I knew how to take away a lot of these corner routes. So depending on what motion he used, or if he didn't motion, I knew how to adjust my safeties in my corners to really do a good job against bunch tight end um, and force everything underneath. That was that was my focal point defensively, was I wanted everything to be open underneath because um, that was going to give me the ability to jump. Um, here, you've got the post. Once again, I had nothing else to guard right there, just very sloppy user. Um, 14, six, um, I'm not playing well, like in the grand scheme of things, like I did not play a good game here. Um, and to be honest, like he, he didn't either. And it, it has a lot to do with the mode that we're playing there. I finally bait him. Um, I think right there, like, I don't know if he was pressured or what the case may have been, but, um, I was able to bite right underneath it. He threw it right to me. Got a nice little user pick right there. Here, he's a nickel over. I'm assuming it's match. And if you watch Michael Thomas here, looking back on this, this is a touchdown. Um, once again, he's got his defensive end with double or nothing on the right-hand side. Of course, he absolutely throws my tackle to the guard. I had a one-play score. Like, could have iced the game right there. Um, should have definitely had that. He goes to dollar. Once again, I feel s extremely comfortable against dollar. So the mistake he makes in this game is... He just, he bounced around, um, but always oftentimes ended up in dollar. And when he did, like, I was always able to pick up, you know, solid yards. Like, right there, it's, again, a seven. I need to keep this clock running. Um, now, once again, he goes to, back to Cub. Um, I, I realized that he's dropping his players into zero-yard flats. So I knew this. I could freeform this running back out route. And you'll see that I do exactly that. I freeform the out route up, and I'm able to pick up another gain of, like seven, 10 yards right there. And really, um, at this point, like he's up against it. He's got to start burning his timeouts. I'm up eight. Um, so I'm going to run the QB draw. And once again, like I said, I knew he was crashing his defensive line out, or at least I felt like he was crashing his defensive line out all the time because I was getting screamed at. So I knew theoretically I should be able to run that draw, even though he's got six people in the box. Um, and right there, I was able to finally break one. And, um, yeah, so like right here, like I have the touchdown to the running back. Didn't trust really throwing it. I didn't know what was going to happen with that safety. Um, so I just dump it down. I Like I said, I actually went out of bounds right there, which was unfortunate. 
Um, because I want to keep the clock running. Like, I feel like I'm in field goal range. I make this a two-score game. I don't think he's going to have any real shot at coming back and beating me. He's going to have to get not only a touchdown, but two of them to beat me. Um, and I just don't don't see that happening. Um, or at least I'll have to get a touchdown, a two-point conversion, and another field goal, right? So here, I know he's in Tampa too. I know he's playing um, rather shallow, but I know also know that that guy um, won't get out there. So I throw the out route out of verticals. That was something I probably should have went to a lot more. Instead of a trying to attack the middle of the field where his user was, I probably should have just attacked the, the flats a little bit more. I was almost afraid of the flats. Um, and you see, I pick up that first down. Now I'm able to milk this clock pretty much all the way, and I'm, I'm not going to do anything risky at all here. So, like, I'm running the ball, but I'm on conservative, so I shouldn't fumble with my quarterback ever. I shouldn't fumble with anybody on conservative. And here you see, on third and seven, we run the ball again. Doing nothing at all besides burning his timeouts. I'm going to kick this field goal, and I'm going to play defense. Like, I, he hasn't shown me that he's able to really beat this defense, especially deep. And, like I said, I know how to take away the majority of his bombs. You see, like, I'm adjusting my safety. I'm adjusting my corners. Um, and if he wants to chuck it down, you know, let him. That's, that's kind of my philosophy here, right? And um, you'll see, like, at this point in the game, he knows he's got to press, and he's just going to start chucking stuff, and we should have gotten out of here, at, like, right here. Like, that should have been a pick. Um, but really, he, he, he kind of got screwed in a couple instances, right? That first half was very sketchy uh, from my standpoint. Here, you know, we actually go to blitz, and, you know, he's trucking a running back. Like I said, I'm, I'm going to give him all the underneath stuff, uh, and he's just not going to... He's not going to really be able to do much with it, um, especially down this many points. So, so as you guys can see, the really the the lab work I had defensively really came into play because his biggest play for him it, that game, right, the fourth and ten to keep the drive alive. He's in some formation he hasn't been in yet, and, and like out of a formation like that, you know it's four verticals. But he was trying to get rid of the match coverage, and that was really the the thought process I had defensively. So. Um, I felt like I did a very good job defensively in this game in terms of taking away what he wanted, which was he wanted to be in bunch tight end. He wanted to attack deep. Um, and then, of course, I, just, I had the edge threats going crazy, and I had a couple timely, uh, lucky plays, right? The fumble in the first half was very lucky. Um, the overthrow to the running back or the overthrow to the tight end right before half, the running back streak in the first half um, could have been a score. Um and then, of course, the defensive, defensively in the second half, we pretty much just locked up. So played really bad offensively, played really good defensively, and um, was able to get a win. So he kind of can show, like, you can win money in this league or you can win money playing good on one side of the ball, even if you're not the best on the other side of the ball. And uh, hopefully you guys see that and enjoy the game.